but four six six. I don't know how many know that him. So we're starting the chapter which says, um, is not this the carpenter's son? It's not this the carpenter's son. Let me just share it on the screen now. Okay. Hymn number 466. Anyone who'd like to, to sing? Any volunteers? Yes, we know the song. Wonderful piece, yes. Uh, sisters, can you take the first verse, please? Okay. Thank you. Um I'll take this. I'll take number two. Anyone would like to take number three? I can do two. Number three. So can do number Thank you. And the last one. I'll take number four as well. Right. Um, Tackley Sisters, can you uh, start us off, please? Far away in the depths of my spirit to thy rolls a melody sweeter than some. In celestial like strains it unceasingly falls. Oh, my soul, like an infinite calm. Peace, peace. Wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of billows of love. What a treasure I have in this wonderful peace Buried deep in my inner soul So secure that no power can mine it away While the years of eternity roll Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless pillows of love. I believe when I rise to that city of peace, where the water of peace I shall see, that one strain of the song which the ransomed will sing, in that heavenly kingdom will be. Peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray in the fatherless pillows of love. A weary soul without gladness or comfort or rest Passing down the rough pathway of time May the Saviour, your friend, the shadows grow dark Oh, accept of this peace so sublime Peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. 
Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless pillows of love. Shall we pray? A loving Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, what a privilege to come together to pray and to study your word. Oh Lord, we want to thank you for this opportunity to open your words. Wonderful words of life. Father, we ask this morning that you may forgive us of our sin. Because it is sin that separates us with you. You want to make your body in us. You want to dwell in us. Oh Father, may you fulfill your promise. May Christ dwell in us, in our hearts. As we study your word this morning, we ask that you may, it may be a living word. It may not just be words, but that we'll keep it in our hearts. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We need these words today. May this be our daily bread. Thank you for everybody who has tuned in. We ask for a blessing. We ask that the Holy Spirit may be our teacher and our counsel. That we will not miss even one jot of a lesson that you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so... The title of this new chapter is, Is Not This the Carpenter's Son? We were blessed with the previous chapter, The Kingdom of God is And now we are uh, going to be looking at Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 30. And this is where this chapter is based. Luke chapter 4, 4. Verses 16 to 30. Maybe let's read uh, from the Bible. Uh, let's hear the account of uh, Brother Luke when he records what was taking place. So if we have our Bibles, let's turn our Bibles to um, Luke chapter 4, verse 30, uh, so rather 16 to 30. So if we have... Um, uh, if we share the verses, if if we just circulate the reading, somebody can read two or three verses and then leave for somebody else. And we just read through up to verse 30, Luke chapter 4. I'll start uh, from verse 16. It says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath, the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all who bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, you will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have had done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. 
And then. Then, verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country, but I tell you of the truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land, but none of them was sent, save was Elias sent, save unto Sarepha, the city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in that time of Elias, and the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, save Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue were, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Somebody else to finish up? Andrew. Go ahead, sister. Go ahead, sister. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him out and led him unto the brow of the hill where on their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. Up to what face? Uh, verse 30, please. The next one. Verse 30, but he passing through the midst of them went his way. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for the reading. May God bless the reading of his word. All right, so uh, let's come to the reading now before we 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 open for comments to the law to the law and to the testimony. This is uh, how we're going to we'll start with the with the with the word, then we we'll go to the testimony, which is the spirit of prophecy. Now, uh, do we have anybody who would like to read for us? Um, the first are two paragraphs, just the the small one and the one that says during his childhood. Across the bright days of Christ's ministry in Galilee, one shadow lay, the people of Nazareth rejected him. Is not this the carpenter's son, they said. During his childhood and youth, Jesus had worshipped among his brethren in the synagogue at Nazareth. Since the opening of his ministry, he had been absent from them, but they had not been ignorant of what had befallen him. As he again appeared among them, their interest and expectation were excited to the highest pitch. Here were the familiar forms and faces of those whom he had known from infancy. Here were his mother, his brothers and sisters, and all eyes were turned upon him as he entered the synagogue upon the Sabbath day and he took his place among the worshippers. Amen. Okay, let's pause there. Um, so we get uh, some, some background uh, before we, we, we continue the reading. The title is, Is This Not the Carpenter's Son? So, uh, I, I can almost um, um, understand, um, at least I have a bit of an understanding of um, where this is coming from. So we notice that from the birth of Christ, uh, this is uh, where he had been. You know, they are familiar with him. This is where his um, his uh, uh, family used to attend church. This was his community. This was his neighborhood from from his childhood. Okay, so you can understand this day when he went into the synagogue to worship. I mean, Luke uh, makes it clear that as it was his custom. Now, I think what we're seeing here is first of all it was jesus custom to go to uh, to attend church every sabbath 
They call it the synagogue there, uh, which is what we call church. Now, it was his custom to attend church on every Sabbath. But um, the information that we're also getting here is that Jesus had not been with them uh, since he had started his ministry. So we're looking at uh, AD 20, uh, this is AD 27. We don't know how long he had been separated with his family. Um, but notice when he started his ministry, we were looking at these prophecies uh, in the last, in the previous chapter. It was AD 27 when he was baptized by John. He went into the wilderness. We know he was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights fasting and praying. Um, so when he came out of the wilderness, yes, this is when now uh, he, uh, 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 he was picking his disciples. Now, I'm, I would like to assume that after, because when he's coming to Nazareth again now, he must have heard the disciples with him this time. So, 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 so you could say this was still AD 27, but maybe there must have been a lapse of time uh, 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 since the time. Uh, he was baptized with John. He must have not been around. But now he's coming back to his neighborhood. They must have heard, I mean, it appears in that paragraph that he was in Capernaum. They must have heard. So so it appears that when he left the wilderness, he spent some time in Capernaum doing ministry and the head of the wonderful works that were going on. But uh, let's not uh, preempt a lot. I don't know if um, there's anything that stood out in those uh, two paragraphs that were ever. Anybody else who saw something? Yes. Uh, Tackle sisters, please go ahead. Yes, good morning. Yes, good morning. Uh, custom, uh, to worship uh, in, in the synagogue, you know, so those who think that the they don't need to go to church and that when they when they are able to go to church you know the it, it's not um it's not right you know you should be able, you should not forsake the assembly of your of the brethren because it encourages you mm, absolutely so oh. it was his custom he did not forsake the assembly yes good morning also he um it says a prophet's not accepted in his own town you know um, he's, he hadn't been there for a while and they probably heard stories, you know, because news travels that he'd, he'd done this and done that. Mm. There was an expectancy and some some didn't accept him, you know. Um, so some was in, uh, the, their interests and expectations were excited to the high, highest pitch. Mm -hmm. Familiar forms and faces, those who we had known in infancy. Here were his mother, his brothers and sisters and all eyes were turned upon him. They didn't understand his, yeah. his ministry, his mission. Mm. They thought it was just yeah. going to be earthly. Mm. You know, he was, he, his, his kingdom wasn't of this world. And they was hoping, you know, what they're going to get out of it, you know. Yeah, and we know that his mother was, I mean, mother wanted the best for him. Yeah, mm -hmm. she wanted the best for him, you know, and she'd got great expectations. And, um, but then there was some against him, you know, that, that, yeah, a prophet's not, as I said earlier, prophet's not accepted in his own town. And so there was prejudice and there was expectations. There was, it was a mixed mixed multitude. Mm -hmm. They all had different ideas. Yeah. It's interesting that there was uh, 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 so much excitement. He says, uh, to the highest pitch. So, so, so. I wonder... Uh, why they were so excited was it because uh, they had missed him dearly uh, as one of theirs or they, they, they are curious as to understand i think a lot what... of curiosity <laughs> curiosity is <laughs> it uh mother kezia please go ahead yeah good morning thank you sun desire good morning. good morning everyone on the platform Yes, I just wanted to take us back to the geography as well. 
Um, yes, we know when he was baptized, he was in the in the region of Judea. And then he had started his ministry there. But then there arose that contention between um, the disciples of um, uh, John and, and right. himself. And then he he decided that, you know, he would do his ministry up in, in Galilee. And going to Galilee, that's when he passed through um, uh, Samaria. And we see him um, having been accepted in, in, uh, with the Samaritan woman in the city. And he goes up. Capernaum is a, is a city in, in, in Galilee. Galilee mm -hmm. is, a, is, is, a, is a province the region. there. Mm -hmm. It's a region. So um, this city was known to be very busy with all sorts of, you know, um, uh, people. Uh, it was not like you know in the in the south where he had come from. Um, he he wanted to meet all people from all all sorts of you know nations because it was a very commercial city, and obviously the word had spread down to Nazareth to say, um, you know this is what he is doing. So this created excitement mm. to you know um, to to see remember in those days um it was not easy to travel to travel from one place to the other uh, it would take you days or whatever because you'd be traveling with either on horses or or donkeys or whatever so you but the word would spread so now he's now in his own city and and people are expecting miracles as they have had uh, that that's what he has been doing, you know. So now they are also expecting those miracles, not because they believe in him, but they they you know they had already had. Remember they when he turned uh, water into wine, it was in his own in his own uh, region he did this. But did they believe that he didn't? But now they are expecting to to see more miracles. To see is is this not Joseph's son? You know, this builds some excitement. That's what I'm thinking as well. Thank you. Very interesting indeed. Yes. So 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 he's uh, now in Nazareth. I was just thinking, uh, saying that uh, they've heard the the the, the fame had gone abroad that uh, this man is working great miracles demons are trembling i mean you can just imagine um uh, the excitement as uh, sister white says the uh, commentary says it was the, the the excitement was to the highest pitch and so he comes he joins the worshipers now they see the man in their midst and this is the man uh, they are well mm, acquainted with so so let's read on. Uh, was there any other thoughts? Okay, let's pick up from where we left. Uh, if we can read the um, the the next two paragraphs again, please. In the regular service for the day, the elder read from the prophets and exhorted the people still to hope for the coming one who would bring in a glorious reign and banish all oppression. He sought to encourage his hearers by rehearsing the evidence that the Messiah's coming was near. He described the glory of his advent, keeping prominent the thought that he would appear at the, end of the, at the head of the armies to Israel, to deliver Israel. When... when when a rabbi was present at the synagogue, he was expected to deliver the sermon, and any Israelite might give the reading from the prophets. Upon this Sabbath, Jesus was requested to take part in the service. He stood up to read, and there was delivered unto him a roll of the prophet Isaiah, Luke 4, verses 16 and 17. The scripture. Oh, yeah. The scripture which he read was one, was that one understood as referring to the Messiah. Right. Amen. Amen. Let's pause before we 
that we we pick up from there. Um, in fact, maybe uh, let's just get somebody to read uh, just the, the scripture in the small paragraph that comes up, and then we'll comment. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord, let's just read that as well. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the robe and gave it back to the attendant. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fastened on him. And all bear him witness and wondered at the words of grace which proceeded out of his mouth. You know, I was just thinking, reading uh, this background that we're looking at, that um, I don't know, um, it, it's something familiar. Um, not long ago, we 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 went uh, we went back home. Um, obviously, um, it was for for the funeral, but um, we went to the church. You know, the home church uh, that I had been many years ago. Yeah. So this is a church uh, that I had worshipped, the people that are familiar, I'm familiar with, families that I'm familiar with. Um, you know, there's something that I can resonate with here, what the elders at, uh, the church in Nazareth were doing. Uh, they know that uh, this, 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 this rabbi, uh, this Jesus, he used to take part in the service. I'd like to believe that Jesus used to take part in service. They had heard that he was still doing ministry. So it's almost like you visit your home church the church that you have been before, uh, and people are so excited to see, and because they know that you're an evangelist, the elders will come round. You know, you can imagine, uh, and they say, "Well, we're privileged to have you today. How about uh, you take the divine service?" Uh, I'm sure somebody is familiar with uh, some of these things. Uh, I can almost see. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the, because they they know that Jesus um, is still in ministry and is doing great things. I mean, for for them, it's a privilege to have him take the spot on the Sabbath. So one also one one of the other things that was mentioned there, uh, I, I guess this is a thing with the Jews. They they delight to hear about uh, the coming Messiah. This is a thing of the Jews. So it was their custom that uh, they would read their portion in scripture. They wanted to, to, to revive their hopes, the hope of Israel, because they believed in this Messiah who was to come and revolutionize, revolutionize, I don't know whether that's a word, who was going to turn things around for the people of Israel. So, so it was customary that uh, people should, should, their hopes should be awakened. Now, Jesus chose this particular scripture. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I'm sure we're going to see uh, why he chose this particular scripture. And it's amazing that when he reads this scripture, it says, after finishing this text, he gave back the book to the attendant. Now, one thing that's different when Jesus is reading the word, remember, he is the word. They saw something different when he's reading this scripture than when everyone else was reading the scripture. That's why he says, oh, bear him witness and wondered at the words of grace. It's almost as if 
Well, it was actually hearing God speaking his word uh, for them on that particular day. So, so, so for me, I'm just trying to, 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 to understand where they were coming from, how things were going on that Sabbath. I'm also trying to understand uh, uh, where their expectations were coming from. I'm sure they had um, uh, uh, a genuine interest to hear what Jesus was going to, 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 to preach about since they had not had him for such a long time. And I thought that was interesting. So, any 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 thoughts at all from uh, from those uh, uh, readings so far? Uh, um, I'm not preempting the uh, the content of the scripture that uh, he chose um, because uh, I think this is what's coming um, coming next because he was going to explain the words that he had just read before them all. Right, if there's no, uh, yes. oh, we, we have hands, yes. Go ahead, sisters, and then uh, Mother Casey. <laughs> it said the book of the prophet Isaiah was given him. We're not sure if he asked for the book or whether it was just given him, you know, God's direction. And then it said, <laughs> and imagine he found that And imagine he read it beautifully. You know, there's good readers and there's readers that are not so good. But uh, you know, imagine, imagine, and, and imagine he put it with put life into it. You know, you can imagine him reading it, speaking and, the uh, word, speaking the word, and um, you know, mm. the, 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 the silence in the room uh, because how it beautifully you read it. Then he said, "This day is fulfilled." You know, fulfillment, mm. and um, and uh, it, it'd be the people. Some people would be in awe of it, you know, because it'd be so such a powerful reading that he read. And when all what had happened, like when he was crucified and that, and uh, some would realise, you know, that uh, he was the Messiah. Mm. You know, there was something when um, Jesus was speaking the word or reading the word or was quoting the word. He was that word. You know, it's one thing to to hear somebody else read the content of uh, of a letter and now having the person who has written the letter read mm. before the people mm. uh, you can almost um, feel every word uh, 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 every particular detail in 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 that reading because He's expressing his mind as he reads uh, the, 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 the scripture. I think it must have been the most beautiful thing to hear Jesus reading about himself in, in that particular scripture, yes. Uh, Mother Kezia, please go ahead. You've almost taken words out of my mouth because <laughs> I was thinking of... Um... First John, the word became flesh. Yes. And the flesh came to live amongst us. Jesus is the word, and he is expressing himself, the word and the flesh together. Right. Um, and it must have been, you know, like exploding, just like, you know, sometimes when you are studying the Bible and you have asked for the Holy Spirit for guidance, mm -hmm. sometimes you you just get so absorbed. Do you understand? Because the spirit is revealing what, mm -hmm. what he has written in you. Mm -hmm. it's, it becomes alive. So it right. is with us. It, this, the, the word should become alive in us. Because this word, this spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the one who inspired these writers to write. 
And mm. when we read the uh, when we read asking the spirit to illuminate the word to us, it will be burning and it will be it will impress on our minds. It will give us that um, age to want to know more mm, mm. because we are reading of the same the one who who is uh, who is enlightening is the one who wrote it do you understand yes but yes. when we read the word without asking the holy spirit if you read the bible just like any other book then you don't get that um uh, that uh, burning or that um uh, enlightenment that joy that peace and it will be meaningless therefore this is why when we open scriptures we should always ask for the spirit to lead us because he's the one who's written the word amen so and also i just wanted also to 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 say um these people um the rabbis and uh they must have been so surprised because it was it's you know the, the godhead was there in front of them and you cannot help but you know look in in ad admiration they were not expecting that they were expecting joseph's son to say okay he used to save you know in in the temple or whatever before but now when he's reading this they must have realized that there was something different about about that sermon today and they were the only problem they had was um they were looking you know for the worldly deliverance right mm. if they were looking for spiritual deliverance they would have been delivered but because the the second the third temptation that you know bow down and will get they were looking for the worldly kingdom whereas christ says this is not my kingdom as we can see now the excitement about the war in israel the new setting up of jerusalem people are looking for christians are looking for the worldly establishment of the nation of israel so that they can be able to sacrifice the messiah coming you that excitement is is there because of you know what they are going to gain out of it mm. that the pope is going to rule this whole world now because obviously that is making path for for the pope to be able to to take control the deadly wound is going to be healed so there is that oh, excitement my. but in the wrong place Whereas mm. we are looking for the kingdom of heaven, that Christ is coming to take those who have, um, who have um, accepted Him as mm. Master and Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yes, uh, indeed. I'm just thinking of the words uh, you find in Great Controversy. I think it's Great Controversy, the introduction, uh, the introduction, where sisters. Sister Y speaks of um, the similarity um, between the Word of God in print and Jesus Christ. Um, he was indeed the Word of God. You know, she says something like this, that as it is with the Scriptures, so it was with Jesus Christ. You know, with the Scriptures, God moved upon the human mind. And they are the, the people used to write the scriptures. It's only the Ten Commandments that God wrote with his own finger. But he used people to write the scriptures. How did he use fallible uh, human beings but yet we say the scriptures are infallible. But yet they were written with fallible man. So 
the spirit of God used the flesh. But nonetheless, the content is infallible. It is God's word. And this is where many people stumble. They say, how do you believe the Bible which was written by Peter or by Paul? God should, they would, in fact, they say, if this Bible was written by God himself, we're going to accept it. Oh, they were never going to accept it, if it had come, even if it had come down from heaven. Where there's unbelief, there's always a reason for unbelief. They did. You know, we will always find hooks to hang our unbeliefs or our, 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 our doubts. But now she also compares, she says, Christ, here's the thing. No, see, the title of this chapter is, Is This Not the Carpenter's Son? They stumbled on the divinity of Christ, and many still stumble now because they say, How can he be divine? Yet we know that he was born of Mary. We know his mother. We know his, his, his father, uh, uh, Joseph. I wonder if they had asked Mary the miraculous conception that she had. I wonder if they, they took care to, to actually understand the circumstances of the birth of Christ. But yet, to them, this was just the carpenter's son. So, so, so just as it was with the scriptures, oh, it was written by men. You can't take it as the word of God. The same was in Christ. It's humanity and divinity blended. The word became flesh, as you rightly quoted. Um, John 1 verse 40. Um, there was two more hands. Uh, was it... Um, uh, Mother Dorothy and then Sister Martha. Hi, good morning. Uh, good, good morning, morning everyone. Morning. Thank you, yes. Desire. You know, I was just thinking that as we were reading this, I found a reference to uh, from spiritual prophecy, which I found it explains so well about these words that Christ spoke that day. Uh, can you allow me to share with everyone? Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Oh, absolutely. And yeah, she says, the example of the Savior should inspire us to put forth honest, self-sacrificing effort for the good of others. He came to this world as the unwearied servant of man's necessity. Love for the lost race was manifested in all that he said and did. He clothed his divinity with humanity, that he might stand among the human beings as one of them, a sharer of their poverty and the griefs that a what a busy life he led. Day by day, he might be seen entering the humble abodes of wound and sorrow, speaking hope to the downcast and peace to the distressed. This is the work that he asks his people to do today. Humble, gracious, tender-hearted, pitiful, he went about doing good, lifting up the bowed down and comforting the sorrowful None who came to him went away unhelped. To mm. all he brought hope and gladness. I think that summarizes these words that Christ spoke here. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Uh, for he has anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor. So the gospel should bring relief to those who are heavy laden. Mm. It should bring deliverance. So when we are representatives of Christ, we should mimic Christ, you know, copy him. We should think any situation we should ask what Christ would have done. What would have Christ done in this situation? And I, I also picked on the way uh, he brought these words to, to the people uh, in, the, in the synagogue. He says that they wondered at the words of grace which proceeded out of his mouth. You know, when the Spirit of God is in our hearts, 
we will be gracious at all times. Mm. Even when we are provoked, the Spirit of God will, will uh, give us that self-control that we, we will meet each situation because we are going to be confronted. There is no way that you can surrender your life to Christ and have Christ in you and you fail to notice the, the controversy. When you say something is good, there will be someone saying that it's bad. When you tell the truth, you will meet people who oppose that truth. So Christ was gracious at all times. His words were main, meant to heal, to draw men to his father, to himself and to his father. And therefore, every one of us, I'm sure you must have had this experience. We have to ask God to help us to have that grace in our, on our lips. When we meet people who are ignorant, how do we speak to them? Are we gracious? Do we draw them to Christ or we drive them away from Christ? You know, have you never seen people arguing like, really like, hmm, like cats and dogs? Oh, no. You know, yes, we have the truth, but we don't have to be. We cannot afford to be ungracious to people who do not have the truth. So I think here it is God's grace and just much prayer that we will be transformed to have this amazing character of Christ as we re remember we are representatives of Christ at all times, anywhere, wherever we are, at home, in the neighborhood, in the cities, in the towns, wherever we go. So we must seek this grace which Christ had. And if we speak words, mm. they will melt the hearts of men. People will be drawn to us. You know, and even if they object what you are saying, you know they have been convicted and they have rejected God's grace. But let them not be put off by the way we speak words of life to them. That's what stood out there for me. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you indeed. Powerful uh, uh, thoughts. Um, yes, Sister Martha, please go ahead. Yes, sure. Thank you and good morning. Um, good morning. I just want to comment on the last paragraph, what struck me there. When you close the scroll, it says the eyes of all the synagogue were fastened on him. Mm. Um, and uh, what Sister Dorothy it just said that all bear him witness and wondered at the words of grace which proceeded out of his mouth. This actually took me back to Matthew 7, verse 29, where it says he taught as one having authority and not as the scribes. Mm -hmm. And as the other speakers have said that because he had written, I mean, he had inspired the words of Isaiah that he read, he understood them. So those were his own words and he was just vocalizing in his own uh, voice, his own words. That's why mm -hmm. he could manage to speak with such authority because he understood and it was a lived experience with him, what those words meant. Amen. Amen. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Uh, I think there was a, was it, was it a question in the chat? Uh, I think uh, Sister Arlene was asking where uh, the quotation was from. Uh, Mother Dorothy, if you can share the reference for the quotation that uh, you shared. Now, he's speaking this particular portion. You, you see what was happening there. They had uh, the, the, the scrolls. You know, the Bible was not, uh, uh, um, I suppose it wasn't in one piece as it is now. You had the scroll of Isaiah. You had the book of Isaiah there. I suppose you had the book of uh, Jeremiah there or uh, uh, the Psalms there and there's something there uh, and maybe the Chronicles and the Kings. Now, he was given the book of Isaiah. 
you can see that the Holy Spirit was moving. So he's being handed the book of Isaiah. And then he goes to Isaiah 61 to make this announcement. Now let's 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 read um, uh, what uh, we are told here in this paragraph. Uh, we'll read the next two paragraphs. Probably we'll end there for today, uh, where it says Jesus stood before the people. Uh, somebody can read for us, please. So was it a new hand there, Mother Kezia, or is it an old hand? It was a new head, but then I thought... Please, mm. go ahead, yes. <laughs> go ahead, I yes. Just, you know, I just was thinking, you know, um, that, you know, when we have um, on our pulpits, when we mm -hmm. have uh, people or pastors preaching um, without the Spirit of God directing, mm. Um, the words of, of, you know, this is why probably we have so many, most of us in the church are not repentant because the words are not coming from, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, they are just words because. Right. Empty words. Empty words because the spirit is not there. It's like, it's just a ritual. And the spirit is not there, and you can see even if you ask what what was being preached today, no one can be able to tell you what what what, what it was actually. They will just say it was a good sermon, but what was it? What was he talking about? You wonder now whether mm. you know what's really going on. This is where. When Sister White says uh, one in twenty in the pulpit in in the in the pews um, are, are the only ones converted, but the rest, you know, mm -hmm. it's just a ritual, and we just pray that you know, um, mm. the Spirit of God. We ask for the Spirit of God in everything which we do, because without the Spirit of God, it's just they are just words. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, this is essentially what we need, isn't it? Uh, when we have men filled with the Spirit, speaking the Word, there's power. You know, there's power in God's Word. There's literal power in God's Word when it's um, read and through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But when people take it casually, to support their preconceived ideas or just uh, 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 to follow the routine, the, the, there is no power. This is why you see there's people who are so excited to pick the word to read. And some wonder where the excitement is coming from. Now, uh, I think we'll just read um, just one paragraph and then we'll pick up from tomorrow. Let's read one paragraph and then we'll comment. Uh, there's, on one, there's one more hand. Sister Arlene saying this up. Oh, yes. Please go ahead, Sister Arlene. Sorry. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, morning. Sister um, Kezia um, as was saying um, about you know, people going into... The, the pulpit and speaking you know and it's true you know I'm looking at this part it says the scripture which he read was one that was understood as referring to the Messiah now on Sabbath um, brother Caesar um, preached and he preached a powerful sermon you know and it was thought provoking it was one that you know the, the, what he was speaking about was in Second Timothy 3, verse 1, this know also that in the last day perilous times shall come. And he broke it down so beautifully 
And what he was saying is everything that is written. But, you know, some people just don't want to hear truth. And there's people that um, are glad to hear what the scripture says, because it makes you look into yourself and look and see, um, where am I? Where am I with the Lord? How am I? How is my life with the Lord? Mm. And you can see people squirming in their chairs because he was saying that all this is us. This is the words in the book is us now. Yeah, they t Jesus is telling us this is what he needs. This is what we need to do. And this is what he's looking at. You know, it really was thought provoking. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you for, for sharing the, uh, that, uh, uh, those thoughts. Maybe you can share the link as well on the on the platform if you have uh, the link, um, YouTube link for the same. There is power in God's word, um, but it's up to the hearer whether they're good soil or whether they will allow their hearts to be a stony, stony place. You know, we, we, we make a choice. We, we, we choose whether we want to hear these words and be transformed by them, or we choose that these are just words. Anyway, I'll read this paragraph. He says here, Jesus stood before the people as a living expositor of the prophecies concerning himself, explaining the words he had read. He spoke of the Messiah as a reliever, of the oppressed, a liberator of captives, a healer of the afflicted, restoring sight to the blind, and revealing to the world the light of truth. He impressed these, his impressive manner and the wonderful input of his words thrilled the, ha uh, the hearers with a power they had never felt before. The tide of divine influence broke every barrier down. Like Moses, they beheld the invisible as their hearts were moved upon by the Holy Spirit. They responded with fervent amens and praises to the Lord. So the Spirit of God was in the place, of course. And he was also working on their hearts. So it's interesting that he is now giving the the true import of that text that they had saw uh, and that were had been left out in the book of Isaiah. You know, they pick the portions that suits their their preconceived ideas. But now Jesus is announcing himself as the Messiah and is showing them. What was in the scripture? What the Messiah was supposed to do? And he's showing them this is exactly what he is doing. But who believed this report? As the apostle, uh, as the prophet says, that's another question. Well, it's 6.30 now. Uh, I know we've just started to, to look into the prophecy itself. Um, that Jesus was reading from and how he started explaining that prophecy. I'm sure when we pick up tomorrow, we'll look at the response that he got. Because you see, people have their agendas. And if their agendas are disappointed, you will know. The word of God is a double-edged sword. It's either we fall in line and we will be blessed or we argue with the word of God only to our own disappointment. So, so I'm sure there's so much to learn from this chapter. Um, I, don't, I wanted to end here in 631 now and uh, pray and close. I'm going to ask somebody to pray for us. Um, we've just looked at the introduction of this chapter, I'm sure, by God's grace, we'll be delving a bit more deeper uh, tomorrow. Um, 
if I may ask, um, Sister Martha, will you be able to pray for us? Just before you pray, um, I forgot to, I wasn't aware that we had finished um, your chapter last uh, yesterday, Sister Eileen wanted to thank, just wanted to thank you for taking that chapter and for the powerful chapter it was and how uh, you facilitated so beautifully. May God bless your ministry, Sister Eileen. We were truly blessed with the chapter. I think you will see that this chapter the, are connected. Uh, we move from one to the other. So, so, so let's stay tuned and, um, uh, and keep following. Yes, Sister Martha, if you can pray for us, please. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you for the testimony of your word and for the spirit of prophecy as we go through the book Desire of Ages. As we do your word, we pray that we will not, like the people of Nazareth, reject the word that you bring to us. Open our hearts so that your word will uh, find room in our hearts and as a result we will be transformed and those we come in contact with will uh, get a clearer picture of you. Thank you for your promise to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And as we go out uh, in the world today, we pr I pray that uh, will perfectly reflect you to the people that we interact with is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you for the prayer. Thank you, brethren, for tuning in this morning. Uh, may God bless you. Uh, we're expecting the, uh, the booking form is now out. Uh, it will be posted on the group today. And the poster is also coming this evening, uh, hopefully. Uh, we have the poster this evening for the upcoming December prayer retreat. Please let us share it quickly on the groups. I know that some people would like to book some holidays. Uh, the dates for the retreat are from the 20th to the 26th of December. And we still haven't met our, our, our goal for the uh, traveler's expenses. I mean, for the traveling expenses of the, of the speaker. So if you are uh, still wanting to to help, there's still opportunity. Uh, so far, I think we are we are not halfway through. We're not halfway through. We wanted to raise about three thousand pounds. So far, I think we've only managed to raise about seven hundred or six hundred pounds, maybe just over six hundred pounds. Um, but probably around six seven hundred pounds. That's where we are about. Uh, so. If anyone is impressed, and bear in mind that uh, it's a privilege to bring somebody to share this uh, uh, the, 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 the gospel. When we go to our places of interest, um, I know we won't need to do donations uh, to, to get the ticket money, but imagine God's servant coming, the servant of God coming to, to preach the words of life. What a privilege is ours to bring him over. And so we have a part in the salvation of the souls here. It will be our privilege and our blessing. So um, may God bless you, brethren, as you think about these things. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Everyone.